Okay, I'm recording. Now I'm sharing here. All right. Can you guys see my desktop? Right now it's uh, um, uh, Safari. My, this is great. Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, man. Between, I'm, I'm gonna probably spend my whole lunchtime going down this rabbit hole of just exploring this. Um, wow, that's incredible. All right. So as I said before, you know, here in Rhino, I'm doing a couple of things. Um, I, I found a more enclosed space, right? Like so. You know, this could almost look like, you know, say an interior of a museum. And, uh, and then I have a few windows and, and a, a skylight up here or something, some openings that are letting some light in. Um, and then what I was doing is I was just turning up and down the intensity of, of the skylight and the sun, just to sort of see what that looks like. I go to the sun settings, I have the sun on. In this case, I turned on manual control so I could just tell it to go down in the sky more and, and pick a, a an angle just for the demonstration. I can also turn the turn the intensity of the sun up or down. It looks like here. I guess I'll just leave that at one. I'm not so enamored with um, how unfuzzy these edges are, but we'll see what that looks like when I take the capture out. It looks like I still have, in spite of um, moving a few things around, it still looks like I have a few light leaks here, right? Um, and so. Um, I don't actually mind this light leak. I kind of like it, um, but this one looks kind of weird, right? So if I wanted to actually have a small reveal here, but there's a piece of glass in between them, hiding sort of a, um, you know, sort of light source, letting some of the light in from, from outside, um, you know, that could actually work. Um, but this bottom one, uh, that just looks weird. So I might have to try to touch that up here in, in Photoshop. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to um, uh, do a lot here in Photoshop with this in a short amount of time. Let me just up the intensity and double check a few things. Yeah, I think I toned this down. I just don't want it to grade out too much. You know, I'll do something like that. And I'm just going to go to view, capture, to file. Let's see what happens here. Transparent background. Yep. Viewport. I'll just keep the scale at one. I'm not too concerned about that right now. Hit OK. And uh, it's going to ask me to save it, I'm gonna, by default, it, sa it saves it as a JPEG. I'll remember this time to do a PNG. I'll call this, uh, uh, come on now, interior render 01 or something like that. It's a very quick rendering. Let's see what this looks like when I pop it up into Photoshop here. Open. Here we are. Only one and a half megabytes, right? So a couple of things here. I'm going to try to clean some of these things up. One is this, right? So I want to get rid of this sort of light leak that's right along here. Um, and so first I'm going to try to constrain where I can actually use my paintbrush so I don't mess anything else up while I'm doing this. I'm just going to run it along this, this corner, this edge, this seam. And in this case, maybe I'll try a clone stamp. That's way too large. That's also large. Now I'm actually going to be a little more nuanced here. And I'm going to hold down the option, option key. Here we go, clone stamp. Oh, sorry, it was on eraser. I hit the wrong button. That's embarrassing. OK, there we go. That, that'll be a little better. I'm going to hold down the option key and sample right here. And then I'll paint upwards. And it should sort of, you know, clone this sample that I did with the option key hit along this, this seam here. Oops. I just sampled just the wrong part there. There we go. Just gonna try to fill that in just a little bit. I don't want to. I can always go back over it later um, with the burn, but I just wanted to get rid of that, that glow. It was really bugging the, the daylights out of me here. Um, all right, now a couple of things, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but I wanna sort of sharpen this thing up and, and maybe add some contrast here. I'm gonna go to image and adjustments, okay? Image pull down adjustments. And I'm gonna look at brightness, contrast, exposure levels, curves. Um, 
I could also look at shadows and highlights, right? Let's just take a look at shadows and highlights, right? Um, I can turn my shadows to be darker, my highlights to be brighter, the midtones to be darker or brighter the way I want. There's almost too much control there for my taste right now. I'm just going to go to exposure and I'm just going to darken this scene up a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go to, again, I'm in image pull down adjustments. I'm going to go to levels. Yeah, here we go. Some of the brighter spots I'm going to brighten up here, but I just want to sort of sharpen some things up. Turn, turn some things brighter, some things darker. Um, have a little more contrast there. Um, let's see. So now that I'm inside of this, um, I think I want to maybe put, I'll, I'll add some, some textures here. It might, might help help this thing a little bit. Go ahead and open, um, let's see, downloads. Here we go, textures. And I'll download one of these uh, concrete textures real quick. Let's see, just wanna sort of see what they look like here. Turn them to icons. This one had had some, some back and forth, some nice texture to it. So I'll, I'll go ahead and open that one again. Select it all, control A. Copy, control C, and then paste, control V. Wow, that's really bright now, isn't it? I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down in opacity so I can sort of see what's going on here. And let's say I'm gonna focus in on, on this wall and, and this floor. Um, so I might, the thing is, it's a very peculiar sort of thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. Oop, I just deleted it by accident. Right click. Make sure you duplicate instead of delete. That's a, that's a terrible adjacency there. That's like the opposite of each other. Image, um, edit, sorry, pull down, transform. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it horizontally. And sort of book match it there. I don't really like that book match. It's sort of you know too much bilateral symmetry, but I'll, I can go ahead and sort of um, phase that out here in just a bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and merge those layers and duplicate them again. And I'm gonna flip this new layer up, in this case, flip vertical, move it up there. Now I have a bunch of stuff to clean up, but it is what it is. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, merge these layers. Let's take a look at, at them. I'm gonna go ahead and use the clone stamp tool here. Um, this is much too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and up that size. There we go, I kind of like that a little better. Now I need to resample, let's say my concrete. And what's going on here? Why is it doing that? Huh. It's like lightening things up. I wonder if it's because I, I flattened these as, and they were somewhat opaque and then, or somewhat transparent. Yeah, I probably messed that up. Really? All right, let's turn that opacity back up. There we go. All right. Turn that opacity back up. I'll move this over really quickly. There we go. Um, merge those layers. Now I'll use the clone stamp tool and we'll be able to see what's going on here a little better anyway. So I can take out some of that symmetry here. Um, there, just sort of try to get some of that repetition out of there. All right. I'll duplicate this layer now and flip it vertically, flip vertical, and move this up. Again, I'm going to have a scene here, and I want to sort of get rid of it. I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers, merge, 
And then I'm going to sample parts of this and sample each time a little different part and try to try to take out some of the symmetry here. Yeah, it looks a little better now. All right, so I've made a sort of much larger, like a four times larger sort of texture from one texture here. Now let's turn this way down and uh, I start to clip it out here a little bit. Okay. Use that polygonal lasso tool here and go around. I don't know where that edge is. I'm just sort of eyeballing it here. Oop. Yeah. Can I undo the last selection? I guess not. I'll go ahead and put it on this surface back here as well, I guess. How clumsy of me. Um, here. And here, and here, all the way down to here. I'm not being as careful as I should be, uh, but I think at this point you guys get the gist. Hopefully. Okay, so I have that area. I'm also going to make sure that this is set to combine, continue to combine and add to the selection, um, and select this back here. All right, this is part of that. This upright piece that's down here, projecting up. There we are. All right, let's say select inverse. Let's try this. I don't have this layer selected. There we go. That would help. Um, and now I have this layer. It has an opacity to it. Now I'm amp it up, but let's just take a look at some of the options we have here color burn, linear burn. Ooh, that's pretty dark. Overlay, lightens it up quite a bit. Multiply isn't too bad. I almost like the darker and then I can just sort of turn down the opacity of it a bit. Oh yeah, I kind of like that. Anyway. Um, oh. What, oh, sorry, <laughs> I had the wrong thing selected. Okay, here we go, control command zero. All right, and so I'm starting to add some, some materiality to this. And again, I can, I can go back here and, you know, make it more muted or make it more in your face, right? Um, you know, I could do that for all of these walls and, and go around each face. Um, what I wanted to do was talk a little bit more about this. Um, and and the, the sort of, you know, these things, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm just going to, oh, I just, sorry, deleted layer. I'm getting really bad at that, hitting the wrong button here. I'm going to move this new layer down and I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to use the paint bucket tool and I'm going to fill it in with white. Okay, so I'm going to make sure white is the active color and fill that in with white. Now the white's going to be active color for my paintbrush as well. And there's a couple of different ways I can do this. But one is to think about how to, how to draw, right? And so if I use my polygonal lasso tool and I wanted to, let's say, project down, oh, I always do this the wrong way the first time here. I should have done that. Okay, sorry. One more time. Take number 12. <laughs> Feels like. Okay, now if I use my my paintbrush here, um, and uh, let me let me add a new layer here. I'll call this light ray. Right? I'm gonna get that a nice crisp edge, which I don't want. Okay. So I was using the Pigma Lasso tool, I'm making this thing, you know, even if I tone this thing down, you know, quite a bit, you know, it's still a really sort of harsh edge there that doesn't really work, right? Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my Lasso tool. Oops, here we go. I deselect, select. 
And let's go up to this feather setting, right? And what feather does is it starts to, to soften those edges up so that you have, it builds in a gradient along those edges. So you don't have a sharp edge, but you have um, an edge, like almost as if you were using a soft round brush, right? With a sort of feathered edge. So I'm gonna, you know, maybe amp this up to 20 or something like that, or 15, okay, as a sort of feather. I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna go, go do this, go do that. Go here. I'm actually gonna go past a bit and I'll, I'll, you know, I want the feather to go past this and that way I can sort of trim it out so that it looks like it's being, you know, really sort of feathered here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try this now. Now do you see how I have that feathered edge around this thing? All right, so a couple of things. I'm gonna turn this down. All right. And then I'm just going to trim out the feathers from right around this area, right where the, the this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and Use that polygonal lasso tool one more time. And just sort of trim, trim the part of that light ray out. There we go. Okay, now we have a glare on the floor and we can sort of see those, those sort of solar rays coming through, right? We can even add a little bit of like uh, more bling here if you wanted to. Um, I don't know where it happened to my white background here. Let's see here, white background. Just turn that another off. Create a new one. Okay, sorry about that. Here we are. Right is to think about you know how you could begin to to utilize this and start to to paint that sort of light effect in right, um, which I think is you know really sort of a gorgeous way of thinking about architecture. Right, is light as a material that can be manipulated. Okay. Um, you know, I could even also, I mean, check this out, right? Hmm. Let's say I wanted to increase this. I could always go to filter. I think it's stylize. Is it? Where is it? No. Render. Lens flare, right? Now I could also give it this sort of lens flare effect where I can sort of see the sun from right behind this thing. Oops. Oh, yeah. Right. So you can go crazy with this if you really wanted to, right? Like sort of solar flares and stuff like that. But, but I did want to sort of show you how you can use those paintbrushes, right? To begin to sort of talk about, oh, you know, here's another place where I need to actually um, trim this out, right? Oopsie. Make sure I have the right thing selected here. There we are. Yeah. Right. And so we can begin to again use use light as a material, right? And paint it in um, and, and work with, with these things, right? So I just wanted to sort of show you that now it'd be incumbent on me to do the same thing with this one, right? So ugh, now I've done it. I have to actually like follow through and, and continue doing this. Ugh, what a pain. Right. Um, I mean, whatever. Right. But <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little too uh, overly uh, uh, sensitive to it. But um, let me do that again. I have the the feather still set. I thought so. Let me just try this again here. Do it for this one as well. Yeah. All right. Now we'll tone that way down. Yeah. And now we'll go back through and and edit some of that out. Right. So we'll go down and occlude it around these edges here. Oh yeah, look at that. Gorgeous, oh man. And then the overlap between the two rays. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so that's not so bad, right? But now we're looking, we're looking at contrast, right? So that's another one of those, those terms and things that we can use, right? Those, those elements of, of design, art and composition, right? Um, to play with the viewer's perception of space, to play with how people walk through the space, 
um, to play with the sort of psychology of the space, right? Um, to punctuate things or to make something appear sacred even, right? You know, I mean, when you start to see these sort of, um, these effects, I start to think about like when I've traveled and I, you know, I think about cathedrals or temples um, or, uh, 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 you know, other sorts of uh, monasteries and things like that, that, you know, where things are dark and quiet. And then where you do have light in, um, you know, then it's, it's really punctuated. And there's, you see effects like this a lot in the desert, right? Where you have these sort of thick, heavy walls. And then you don't have very many openings, but where you do then, you start to get these sort of bright spots, um, you know. So anyway, I thought I would just sort of bring that up. I mean, I, you know, it's not the best. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not the, the Photoshop uh, ninja that, uh, you know, some of these other folks are like uh, Alex Hallgraf and, and some of those other folks are. But, um, you know, again, I think what you'll begin to find is that, you know, in the sort of pursuit of lifelong learning as you continue to sort of, you know, um, you can't you can't possibly prepare for every situation in school and then learn it and then remember it all. Um, but, you know, sort of understanding that if there are other folks um, who know these things and they, it's great now on YouTube. I mean, for the last ten years, people have just been posting things. I guess they maybe they're just so they're so boring or they have so much time on their hands that they they do these videos. But um, it's really kind of nice for us, isn't it? So. Um, that's how you can begin to add some ambiance, right? Some of the, the sort of spatial qualities and light qualities that, that you can begin to sort of really play around with here, right? Um, so or at least that's one way of thinking about it. So maybe this has to do with, um, you know, with my um, requirement, you know, to think about how this becomes a sort of performative in the sense of, of, of sort of understanding and displaying something about the solar geometry of our latitude, of our place, of the Mojave Desert and the Las Vegas Valley, right? Um, and so maybe this has to do with, um, you know, morning versus the, the afternoon, right? Certain parts, you know, this part of the, of the uh, room is illuminated in the morning and then in the afternoon, this part of the, is because the sun's coming from the other side or something, right? So can begin to sort of see maybe some things that can happen there. From here, I would start to, you know, again, be very careful about which layers are above other layers and then start to add more textures along walls and floors, ceilings, um, add some people, some scale figures, I think would be really important as well. I see somebody just mentioned something in the chat. That was really cool. I like it. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm pretty cool, dude. I'm pretty much a big deal. <laughs> my kid, of course. I even laugh at my own jokes. That's how claim I am. So um, anyway. I'm avid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, and again, you know, maybe these are too bright, you know, turn them down just a little more, right? Make them just a little, yeah, there you go, 20s. Make this 21-ish. There we go. All right, you can, you can play around with this. Put a little, um, you know, noise in here, like you've seen the dust in the air if you want or whatever, but um, you know, that's something that's definitely a, an opportunity to, to do, right? To sort of think about. And really, it just takes practice. I mean, again, if I did this a lot, I could probably get better at it, you know, over time. Uh, but, you know, it, I would say it's incumbent on you guys to sort of understand that you have to, even if it's lame, bring it, you know, turn the layer off, and then you can turn that layer on and say, I tried this, I turned the layer off, but, um, you know, maybe we can revisit this or that or the other thing, right? If you have, as you need um, help. Oops, stomach's growling, sorry. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my recording and, and stop sharing for a time being. You guys have, I think, a little bit of time to work